Good afternoon. My name is Rob Davis, and I'm from Mellanox Technology. And I'm going to be talking about an exciting new technology called NVMe over fabrics and how it can dramatically increase the efficiency of your data center. I'm going to start out with the evolution of OCP, which has been focused on data center efficiency actually from the beginning, starting out with the computer rack or the rack in the data center and trying to figure out the most efficient way to fill that rack with components, how to get the most components into a rack unit. This then evolved into server density. This is where my company, Mellanox, um, our ConnectX technology provided innovation to allow the disaggregation of the CPU from the network adapter. With this multi-host technology, you could share that network adapter across multiple CPUs, thereby decreasing the amount of components on a server motherboard and increasing the server density. This disaggregation is now evolving into computer storage disaggregation, sometimes called composable infrastructure. Here, we're not only disaggregating the network from the CPU, but we're disaggregating the storage as well. This enables the data center to dynamically allocate the amount of storage and compute needed for an application. So no longer do you need to use a particular size server that's, ma that's matched up to the between compute and storage for an application, meaning you don't have to have multiple different sizes of computers with mixes of compute and, and storage all across the data center. Instead, you can have one kind of compute node, one kind of storage node, and use NVMe over fabrics to dynamically allocate the resources needed for the application. So NVMe over fabrics technology requires a very high performance network because in order to disaggregate the compute from the storage, you have to be able to match as close as possible local storage performance across a network or remote storage performance. And for this, you need high performance network adapters like the Mellanox ConnectX and servers like the Spectrum server or switch from Mellanox. Um, this is not exotic technology. These are standard Ethernet adapters. This is standard technology from NVMe.org, open source software that came with the standard. Um, the switches are open, at least our switches. They can run um, multiple operating systems at, as the user chooses, like Cumulus, for example, or we did an announcement today uh, that we're supporting um, Microsoft Sonic, Sonic um, operating system as well. So this is not exotic technology. So why do you need NVMe over fabrics to do a composable infrastructure? Well, the reason is because of that need to have as close to possible, as possible performance between remote storage and local storage, you need um, to have a very fast interconnect because the storage has been getting faster, not just a little faster, a lot faster. If we look at the difference in performance between hard drives SSDs and the new persistent memory, sometimes called server class memory technology, you can see a dramatic difference. The y-axis here is logarithmic, and there's actually a 10,000 times difference in performance between a hard drive and persistent memory today, 100 times between a hard drive and an SSD. To put that in perspective, think of the distance between where we are here in downtown San Jose and uh, Vancouver, British Columbia. It's 1,000 miles. Now think of the distance, 15 hours by Google driving. Uh, now think of the distance between here and Levi Stadium. That's about 10 miles or 15 minutes, according to Google. That's the difference, that's the difference in performance between a hard drive and an SSD. Now think of walking uh, around the block to the original Joe's. That's about 500 feet. That's the distance between an SSD going to Levi Stadium in 15 minutes and the new persistent memory technology. So storage is getting a tremendous 10,000 times faster in the next few years. It already is 100 times faster. And so in order to do composable infrastructure, we need a very high performance technology like NVMe over fabrics. 
So how did this technology get so fast? Well, it started out um, with the NVMe or NVM Express or non-volatile memory express. Our, um, or our industry loves um, and acronyms and here's one within one. Anyway, what they did was they totally redesigned the interface for SSDs. Originally, SSDs came out with the legacy hard disk drive interfaces, and those had a lot of um, performance bottlenecks because they were designed for moving disks that uh, weren't super high performance. <clears throat> what they did was redesign it from the ground up, starting with the block interface to the operating system and going direct to the NVMe devices without going through SCSI stacks SCSI software stacks that were needed for hard drives. And this dramatically increased the performance, not only more than having the latency, but also um, very, very uh, high improvement in bandwidth. And these, are, these numbers are with quite old SSDs. They're much, much better now. So NVMe over Fabrics takes this very high performance technology and allows it to be networked across, um, across uh, an, an Fabric. So now you can share multiple uh, NVMe SSDs with multiple um, servers. And this gives you a lot of advantages even beyond uh, composable infrastructure. For example, you get better utilization of your capacity um, because you're not um, having to figure out which server has which amount of storage to put which application on. It's all in a pool, so every server has access to it. Uh, much better rack um, utilization, space, and power. Better scalability because you can add more storage at one place, and if you fill that up, you can just add more storage to the network. Better management because it's in one location, and better fault isolation. And it maintains, NVMe over Fabrics maintains that high performance of a local NVMe SSD. This is a chart showing uh, one of our ConnectX adapters running um, in an x86, and you can see six million IOPS and near line rate um, on 100 gig ethernet. So here's how the technology gets that performance. It, it takes that local interface, that local NVMe interface, and it projects it across the network. So the remote drive has no idea that it's across the network. It thinks it's talking locally. And it does that using RDMA technology for the highest performance. You take that NVMe command that's local, and you encapsulate it in RDMA, and you send it across the network at very low latency. And just like we bypass the SCSI stack to get NVMe to work very fast, we're bypassing the TCP IP stack to remove latency and improve the performance. Now, the other thing we need to do is get the wires faster, and here's why. This chart shows um, the number of hard disks it takes to fill a 10 gig, a 40 gig, and a 100 gig a network wire adapter. The, the blue is 100 gig, the red is 10, and the yellow is 40 gig. If I just switch from, use the same interface to the hard drive, but switch it to an SSD, look at the difference. Two of them now fill 10 gig versus 24. So the bottleneck has now moved from the storage to the network. The way to, one way to, uh, the, the saying we like to say is in, at Mellanox is that faster storage needs a faster network. Look what happens if I put NVMe SSDs in. All of a sudden, four of them almost fill 100 gig. Luckily, fixing the wire problem is pretty easy. Um, we at Mellanox have had 100 gig uh, adapters, switches, cables in the market for more than two years now, and there's plenty, we have plenty of competitors that also have 100 gig products. And later this year, 200 and 400 gig will be coming out. So the wire isn't the issue. Um, but we do have to uh, do something about the protocol, because if you look at the hard drive, and the amount of time it takes to access data from it and compare it to the amount of time you spend not only in the wire, which is the green box, but also in the protocol, which is the red, it's, a, it's insignificant. Most of the time is spent accessing the disk. But if I switch to an SSD, all of a sudden, not only the wire, but also the protocol becomes a component of the latency. And if I go to persistent memory, it's even worse. So we got to have new protocols to make per, uh, composable uh, infrastructure work, 
like NVMe, NVMe over Fabric, and RDMA over um, Ethernet. The other thing we need, at least for the optimum performance, is uh, offload engines. So this uh, is a picture that shows the amount of um, CPU utilization that's required to run that um, chart I showed earlier to get the six million IOPS in the full wire speed. Now, you can barely see it, but here's what happens when I turn on the offload engine that's in our new Connect X5 um, adapters as well as our Bluefield SOC or system on chip. That offload engine reduces the CPU utilization, which was 50% to get that, that performance down to barely measurable. Offloads also work for other storage requirements like a security for encryption, for example, if you want to encrypt the data on the disk or you want to encrypt it as it crosses the network. Um, we have other adapters that are doing offload for encryption and they're reducing the load, as you can see by the chart, dramatically as well. This load on the CPU is latency because it's software. And we'll talk about the importance of latency in a second here. Next slide. Also, there's other storage offloads for things like data integrity, so erasure coding, um, a T10 diff, um, compression for uh, you know, using less of those expensive SSDs for your storage. This is another one of our adapters running a compression offload. So offloads are super important for composable infrastructure as you add advanced storage features. Now, why is latency important? So here's a chart that's similar to the one I showed earlier, but has a breakdown of different kinds of SSDs. Um, SSDs are getting faster with each generation. Those ones I showed in the first chart are, you know, that's much better performance now. And here's the amount of performance it takes with common off-the-shelf um, Ethernet adapters and switches that are designed basically to run email. And here's the performance you get with high performance, low latency network devices. <clears throat> and think about this, most configurations, you go through more than one switch, more than one adapter. So here, if you're going from the, store, the server through three switches to get to the storage, you've now added 30 microseconds of latency, which is three times, more than three times the latency of the latest SSDs. And remember, when you're using storage, you're going two ways. You're asking for the data and you're getting it back. So that's 60, 60 microseconds, six times the latency of the SSD is wasted in the network versus six microseconds with Mellanox products. That's why we believe there's a new form of Ethernet switch called Ethernet Storage Fabric or ESF. And these switches are designed for low latency and these adapters are designed for low latency. So let's look at the latency of the storage platform. So this again is the same test setup that I've had multiple charts on. Here we have the initiators which are running ConnectX adapters at 100 gig through a switch to that x86 server with its NVMe SSDs and a ConnectX adapter. This is not running the offload, so the offload's not turned on on this, these ConnectX adapters. You can see the performance that I showed earlier, but also the latency. So the latency, and this is round trip, request and response of just the network. It doesn't include the SSDs. So we ran FIO locally on the target and got a number. We ran it remotely, the same FIO setup on the initiator, on the client, and got a number, subtracted them, that's where the 15 microseconds comes. So that's the round trip using software, no offload, on an x86. Now this is our new um, Bluefield SOC. This product was designed to be a single chip solution for a storage node in composable infrastructure. So it has in it an ARM processor, ConnectX, all the offloads and capabilities of ConnectX uh, for dual 100 gig ethernet, as well as PCI connections for the NVMe SSDs. And you can see the latency is dramatically less, two thirds less, five microseconds. For that, that's round trip. Same setup, same initiators, same x86 initiators. Also, you can see that the performance has gone up. So you reduce the latency, you get more IOPS. So 
Putting it all together, we have composable infrastructure where we're taking the compute and the storage apart. Now we can dynamically allocate the amount of storage to the amount of compute for the application that we have. And MDME over fabrics, with its low latency, high bandwidth, and nearly local disk performance enables that. But you also need a high performance network to make it work most efficiently, most close to um, local performance. And that's where Ethernet storage fabric comes in with its ultra low latency components and the protocol offloads. And if you want to use further offloads for other storage features like security, compression, data integrity, then those are also available at, in the adapters to provide very, you know, to keep the latency super low. So those offloads usually in a storage situation are on the storage node or the tar target node. And it has to be for NVMe over fabric off, uh, protocol offload but it's not necessarily the best location all the time for your offload. Sometimes it makes sense to have it in the compute node. For example, if you're doing data in flight, if you're encrypting that data that's now crossing the ethernet um, and you, you wanna make sure that no one can snoop on it, then you've gotta start with the compute node that's sending it. But there's other applications um, that, other reasons it can make sense. Like if you want the application to make the decision on how that storage is handled, whether it's compressed, whether it's encrypted at rest, what kind of data recovery mechanism you want on it. Also having it on the compute node um, can make it a lot more efficient because you don't have to have, uh, you know, you're basically just doing one interaction with that um, adapter and the adapter has all the offloads. So you're sending data to the adapter anyway. And then finally, um, actually, so that's gonna give you low latency. Um, and actually, and finally, kind of the most interesting thing is what's called uh, isolation or natural, it's a natural place for a security boundary. And that is very interesting because it allows you to disconnect your IO from your compute platform, especially if you're using um, platform as a service or VMs as a service, and you want to ensure that someone running one of those VMs or running one of those platforms can't hack their way through the Ethernet NIC and get out into the network and do whatever they like to do. So I'll look at that a little bit more details. Um, so this is our standard um, Ethernet NIC Connect X5, our latest and greatest. You can see the MVME over fabric offload. I haven't talked about, but there's many other offloads. Here's just a few of them that are more storage oriented. Um, so for example, we can offload video streams and make sure that if you're providing video content, that whether it's hundreds or even thousands of streams, um, where using the offload, you're able to guarantee the quality of that video so no one gets low quality video. Uh, also, um, we do big data acceleration, and then there's RDMA engines uh, for accelerating the Rocky protocol. The one that we can't do yet anyway on our adapters is security. So that's running on the local, um, the local processor. And there's issues with that, right? It's not isolated, it's vulnerable. Also, it doesn't really get that good performance. As you saw when I showed you the offload adapter we have for security, it actually is um, uh, using a ton of CPU and increasing the latency. And it's vulnerable to denial of service attacks. But if we take that Bluefield SOC, the same SOC that's doing the storage platform and put it on an adapter and put it into our server, now it's a different story because we can take that compute or that security and put it in the ARM compute engine and also utilize the security offloads that are embedded into the Bluefield SOC. So now we've isolated the environment of the security. So in a point, you know, in a platform as a service or a VM as a service application, there's no way to hack your way onto uh, onto the remote NIC because it's running trusted software that only you control as the, as the user. So we've talked about uh, a lot of different um, workloads uh, focusing on the MVME over fabrics and the composable infrastructure, but these um, 
accelerations, as I said earlier, are across our entire product line. I talked a little bit about the video and the security and the big data, but we have many, many other offloads um, that uh, are present in our systems. So to summarize, uh, NVMe over fabrics um, is perfectly designed for composable infrastructure, allowing you to dynamically allocate um, the amount of storage and compute you need for your applications. Um, to do that, of course, you need a very high performance network, very high performance network components um, like uh, an Ethernet storage fabric that supports RDMA, very low latency, and very high bandwidth. There's also lots of hardware offloads um, that you can use to accelerate um, the protocols, the security, and the storage features, and um, not only composable, composable infrastructure can take advantage of these. Uh, actually, other storage applications like um, uh, you know, standard SANs, um, software-defined storage, uh, hyper-converged, all of those can also take advantage of NVMe over fabrics, but I've just focused on the composable infrastructure for this talk. And these, off, these offload applicate, or these advantage, the advantages of these offloads can be used across many other workloads as well. So that's uh, all I had. Thanks very much. I'll take questions. Sure. No, no, no. Um, that was a very, very early version of RDMA over Ethernet, probably, I don't know, five, six more years ago. Now um, there's, uh, it uses uh, IP, UDP IP, so it's totally routable. Uh, no, no. Um, so it works best in a lossless network, and you, one thing you have to think about running the performances we're talking about, <clears throat> Whether it's running on TCP or whether it's running on RDMA, if you've got congestion in that network, your performance is going to go down. You can't expect 100 gigabit traffic at one microsecond latency in a congested network. So if you add lossless um, capabilities like uh, priority flow control or ECN, then that's going to improve the performance. But or guarantee the performance. But you can also run it, um, the transport layer for um, RDMA, at least in Mellanox um, technology, has been um, implemented very to support um, lossy networks. You're welcome. Other questions? I guess I'll give you guys 23 seconds back. Thanks very much. <laughs>